bring in retired three-star general Keith Kellogg, former national security advisor to Vice President Mike Pence, and the author of the book War by Other Means, a general in, in the Trump White House, also a Fox News contributor general. Thank you. Um, what do you make of, of that report and what Human Rights Watch is telling us? Yeah, th thanks, Martha, for having me. Look, this you said it a minute ago. This was entirely predictable. Look, when you look at who runs security inside of Afghanistan, it's the Interior Ministry. And the Interior Minister is, is uh, Sira Haqqani. Sira Haqqani is a designated terrorist by the United States, has got a $10 million bounty on his head, and this is the guy who's running security. Of course they were going to do this. It, it shouldn't have surprised anybody. It didn't surprise me. I think it probably surprised the Biden administration because clearly they didn't think about it. But there's a bigger issue here. And my, the bigger issue is what kind of message is this now sending to our allies and our adversaries as well about how well national security is done within the Biden administration. When you've got Ukraine and Russia and China and Taiwan, uh, the Uyghurs in, in China, and you're looking at the current talks, the Iranian nuclear talks going on in Vienna, this does not you know, augur well for confidence in the United States decision making or the national security apparatus that the United States has. So this was predictable. You called it, I called it. The only people who didn't call it was the Biden administration. You know what they did call though, General? They said, we will, we will pick a time and place of our choosing to retaliate yeah. against uh, ISIS-K, uh, against any forces that killed those 13 brave young men and women, uh, yep. Marines and a Navy corpsman who served at the Abbey Gate. They said, President Biden stood in front of everyone and said, you know, we hmm. will, we will retaliate for this attack. He also yeah. said that anybody who was left behind, including people who had served in the Afghan government, which essentially were you know, our allies in that fight because they were trying mm -hmm. to stabilize the government, that anybody who wanted to get out would, would get out. I, I haven't seen an update on this from the president or from Antony Blinken about how this is going. When was the last time we had a plane come with people on it who wanted to leave this situation before their bodies were found at the front door of their family home, General? Yeah, well, their stories haven't aged very well. Uh, in fact, their track record is terrible. And what I'm talking about is a presidential pattern of Joe Biden when he was president and vice president as well. It's always been indecision or making bad decisions. In fact, let's go back to what Bob Gates, former director of the CIA and, and the Defense Department uh, said when he said that Joe Biden has been wrong on nearly every national security decision in the last 40 years, and that pattern continues. And that's what's concerning to me, because that's the pattern that is being seen by our allies and adversaries as well. It's a pattern of indecision or just making bad decisions. And, and you're absolutely right. They talk about it, but they, there's no actions being taken at all. Yeah, I mean, not to mention a, you know, a hit that was supposed to be taking out ISIS-K members in an imminent attack, which turned out to be humanitarian yeah. workers and their family. Yeah. Um, this, this is, you know, it looks like they just want to turn the page on this and forget the whole thing. Um, you hear about those reports of, of so many starving children in Afghanistan. You just wonder um, how that looks to the rest of the world and how it looks to the Afghanis for sure. Um, quick, quick thought from you on this. As a U.S. commander calls for more aircraft carriers in the Pacific uh, to, deter, to deter China, um, and, and talk of sort of sprucing up the bases there as well. Uh, the U.S. 7th Fleet commander called for an expanded presence by the United States and allied aircraft carriers in the Pacific to persuade China and Russia that today is not the day to start a conflict. General. Yeah, well, look, Martha, that's exactly what I would do. I'd put an aircraft carrier. The USS Ronald Reagan is in Japan, and I'd put one in the Trang in, in Vietnam, and I'd say we've got them covered north and south. With two air, with aircraft carriers, carrier battle groups, I'd do that, and that's something that's very smart. I think that military commander has made the right call: is pinch the Chinese and do it by putting overwhelming force in the region. And both the aircraft carrier battle groups would do that. I think it's a smart move. I bet you, but they won't do it. I can guarantee you, they won't do it at all. Really, <laughs> really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, that's in fact, I think they just said that I think they just said that in their defense review, they're not going to reposition any forces. I think it's a huge mistake. I wonder what that commander will do uh, with that decision. General, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very yeah. much, sir. Thank Good you. to have you here today. Thanks. Martin.